Hey everyone, it's Erin and I am back with another new tutorial for everyone. As promised, this is the second version uh, or the second part of last week's tutorial which was how to create a pattern, uh, a pattern swatch, and then I wanted to also show you how to create a seamless pattern swatch in case you wanted to do a more um, intricate design than we did last week. So or something that wasn't even on all four sides. So this, what you're looking at right now, hi everyone, my name is Erin and I am back today with a new tutorial. Um, that is the second part of last week's tutorial. Last week I showed you how to create um, a gradient or um, a pattern swatch in Adobe Illustrator, which I have a link below in the um, description and the blog post. But this week I want to show you how to make a seamless pattern swatch because we're, it's not always going to be, I think I used polka dots last week, it's not always going to be um, a, a pattern that's symmetrical all the way around or even on both, all sides. So like you see the pattern in front of you, this is our finished product of what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, and what makes it super cool is that you can see um, I can fill any sort of shape, oh, there's a star, with this pattern because it is actually, I created a new pattern swatch. So I could draw any sort of shape and it's going to fill with my repeating pattern, which is awesome. So let's get started and I'll show you how to do that. All right, let's get started with making a seamless vector pattern in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, let's get started. First, you want to create your pattern that you're going to repeat. So um, I used um, a series of vector icons that I had on file. Um, I think I purchased this from Creative Market, and it's just a it's just a page full of little shapes that are hand drawn. And I used uh, I just picked a couple of these elements from um, this pack, and I s created a simple vector pattern over here. And what you want to start out with is a square artboard. It doesn't really matter what size. Uh, mine for this demonstration is three inches square. Uh, the only important thing is that it's square, is that it's even on all edges. So once you have your artboard filled with your beginnings of your pattern, what we need to do so to make it seamless is to carry over all the elements from the left, carry them over to the right, and same for the top and the bottom. So we want to mirror everything that goes off the artboard on this edge. We want to mirror it on this side so that when it repeats, you don't see any difference. And the easy way to do that is to click and drag right up to the left side of your artboard. That way, you're sure to select any pieces of artwork that are hanging off. Then we're going to do a control copy and a control F so that we paste it in front. And now you have a copy of that, whatever artwork was sticking off, you have a copy of it. Now we are going to go up to our toolbar at the very top and you should see the box that says X and a box for Y. When we are going to move an object left to right, we are moving it on the X axis. And to get it in the same spot, just on the other side, all we have to do is add three inches. So right now the position says 0 0.2083. We are gonna highlight the zero. We're gonna type in three, and we're gonna hit enter. And now our object moved to the other side. And now it will mirror it will line up with this when the pattern repeats. And I'm gonna lock that down so I know, I'm gonna do a control two so that I know that I can't move that. 
Um, sometimes if you're moving an object over to the side, you might end up running into one of your other elements, and um, we might still see this as we continue on, but feel free to just move your elements around so that um, they don't run into everything. Okay, we did the left side. Now we want to do, we would go to the right side, um, and when I click and drag along the right side of my artboard, other than that, piece of art that I just moved, which I don't want to touch, I don't have anything sticking out. So I don't have to do anything. I don't have to move anything from the right to the left. Um, so that eliminates one side for us. Now we're going to go top to bottom. So we're going to click and drag on the top, and we're going to select the pieces that are sticking out, which it looks like we only have three. And so we, again, do the control copy and the control F to make a paste in front copy. And now to bring your X and Y up, just go ahead and hit transform. It's the same thing, X and Y. Um, but now we're not moving left to right, we're moving up and down. So we're looking at the Y axis and we just wanna move it three inches cause that's the size of our artboard. So we're gonna type in three, hit enter. And there, oh look, it lined up really good. I don't even think I have to move much. So I might move this a little hard around because that's a little bit close. And then I want to bring this. I think I want to fill in the space a little bit more. Um, do this. There. just kind of fills in that hole because there's just a tiny piece of that that's going to show. Um, okay, and I'm going to lock those down so that I know that I can't move them. They have to stay where they are. And then we would do the same thing moving from the bottom to the top, but I believe we're going to lock out again because other than those three shapes that I just moved, if I click and drag, there's no other elements that are um, bleeding off the edge. So we should be set. We only have to do two sides. Um, okay, so now we have our objects lined up so that when they repeat, they will fall on top of each other. Now what we want to do is select, um, wait, let's unlock everything. So object, unlock, so that we can grab everything. And then I'm going to take my rectangle tool over here on the side. And since we want our rectangle, um, we're, what we're going to do is draw a mask, and we want our mask to be exactly 3 by 3 inches. So we're going to click, and when the rectangle measurements come up, we're going to do 3 and 3. That way we know that it's for sure um, 3 inches. I'm going to line it up on our artboard. And we're going to make our mask. So now we click and drag so we get our square plus all of our elements underneath. And we do an object, clipping mask, make. So now the only um, other important thing to do now, we have our mask created. But if we were to try to create a swatch pattern out of this right now, it would still recognize these pieces of artwork that are falling off and that are cropped out in the mask. It would still recognize those and it's going to throw the pattern off. So to get rid of those outside elements, um, we need to, first of all, make a copy. So I'm going to click, I'm going to hold Control, Alt, and drag so that I get a copy which it just doesn't have a white background. Here, we'll do a white background. There. Because now we can still come back and edit this piece of art, but we are going to get rid of the stuff around there. So how we do that is we select our grouped and clipped um, pattern, and then we're gonna call up our Pathfinder palette, which you can find under Window. Pathfinder, and then we want to select our group, and then we want to hit this box that's kind of in the middle, it's called Crop, and if you hit Crop, it cuts everything off at the edges, so 
we no, long, we no longer have the overhanging objects on the top one. And that is exactly what we want. So now we are ready to create our swatch. We're gonna select that. We're gonna bring up our swatch palette and we are going to drag it over and drop it into the swatches. And it has just created a new pattern swatch six. So now cross our fingers if we're lucky and we draw our rectangle down here and then we click on our new swatch number six it will voila fill it with a perfectly repeated pattern pretty cool huh and let's say that um you didn't want the background to be transparent like it is now because if we move it off the artboard you can see the white background isn't actually there but if you want it to be white all the time, it's really easy. All you have to do is make another copy of your cropped artboard. And you're going to click and drag. And you're going to draw another white box, three by three. And you don't want your pattern, you want to fill it with white or whatever background color you want. Let's um, let's actually just try a little bit of gray. Yeah. And then we're gonna line it up. Um, and then we could probably use the shortcut. If you right click on your box, arrange, send to back. It's in the background. Let's just make sure. I think we wanna do a new crop. Um, so let's drag our background outside of the artboard just a little bit. And then we're going to take another rectangle to do our crop, which is three by three. Just doesn't look like it's lining up perfect. Select everything, object, mask, make, and we shouldn't have anything hanging out the edge, but let's select it, go to our pathfinder, hit crop, perfect, and now we are ready to do our swatch, so with your swatch palette up, you're going to click and drag. And now you have a swatch with the background color. So you can do a shape. Let's do a star. I'm sick of rectangles. So you can do a star with your first pattern, which is just a transparent background. Or you can do a star and use your background. I really, really hope that this tutorial is helpful for you. And as always, if you have any questions on creating a seamless repeating pattern swatch in Illustrator, just drop me a line, send me an email, or leave it in the comments. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.